Hi! So, so far we have been able to solve scalar ordinary differential equations with given some initial conditions, but we would also like to solve differential equations that are system of equations that may be uh, interdependent and also higher order ODEs. So we want to build or expand what we've written so far, the forward Euler method, to also be able to solve systems of differential equations and we'll see that those will also be able to solve higher order differential equations. So let's go! So, so far we have looked at equations of the form uh, derivative of u equals some function which is dependent on u and t, right? But now we want to um, solve some sort of system where we have uh, the derivative of u which is one equation. In fact, let's write that d dt equal to some uh, function which may be dependent on all of our equations of all the solutions all the way up to some um and of course on t so we have a set of these so we have m equations now so the ith equation will be look exactly the same, but it might be some other function that also depends on u0 and u1 all the way up to um. And it continues like this up to derivative of um. So there you go. That's the sort of system that we should be able to solve. And of course each of these um, equation, the use would need a um, an initial condition. So the zero value must be a specific value. So this is for all m equations, right? Uh, this is much easier to look at if we look at it in vector forms. So now we introduce some u, which is, is a vector and it contains all of these uh, equations all the way up to u m like so and we can go do the same thing for our uh, our function up to f m and of course for the uh, uh, initial conditions and when we do this Euler's method will actually be exactly the same because like a scalar a vector is a linear construct so again the forward Euler scheme forward will look exactly the same as before there you go it's as simple as uh, that and for all other numerical schemes that will implement uh, uh, in the latter video they'll also be the same so let's, let's look at an example. And what we'll do, we'll look at a higher order differential equation and see how we could adapt it to a system of equations and be able to solve it. So say we have a, an equation like this, the uh, second derivative of u plus u equals zero. So this is a second order ordinary differential equation. And uh, the solutions are known. It's a, it has an analytical sol solution where u is uh, sine of uh, t and the derivative of u would be the cosine of t. And this is in the particular case where we have the initial conditions u of 0 is equal to 0 and the derivative of u at point t equal to 0 is 1. So hopefully if you know how to solve this it's, it's, it's not too difficult. And what we'll do now is we'll divide it up in terms and we'll say that u0 which will be our first equation to solve and let's be specific now so it's a function of t equals u of t so that's so this is this guy right and we'll also write that u1 of t equals the derivative u of t which is not really in the equation but we see that if we take the derivative of uh, the left equation here we get something like this d u 
of 0 with regards to d to t equals d u d t right which equals u 1 right and this is th this bit and then we can also write down the d u 1 d t which will be minus u 0 which we see when we rewrite this equation here we see that we get that the second derivative of u equals to minus u which is u0 of t and we don't really need let's just remove this term and move this uh, other bit further in and these are our is our, now our set of differential equations that we need to solve in order to solve our equation up here. Simple, right? So let's, uh, let's implement them. All right, here we are back in our program. Now instead, let's start here with our, uh, our function, which will be our uh, right-hand side. But right now, as we saw, that we just wrote, this should return some array of uh, first equation in our system of equation and the second. We're going to write it as that. So now the u that is our input is uh, is simply an array of all the equations, and we'll we'll see how that works in a in a while. And right now we are going to remove this bit because we don't need it yet. But uh, yeah, we'll do something similar in a while. And but before we can before we can do anything we we will get some errors up here because right now our f will also be a vector and we also need our t and a u to be a vector i i think yeah um so we are going to uh, or at least yeah this guy the t will all the t's will always be the same but our u's our solutions they will also be have another dimension right so we're going to check if uh, the initial condition is just a number because then we'll only have one equation or is are several numbers or an array uh, and then we will have to provide several solutions to the problem right so we're going to check that if is instance u0 and if it is an integer or a floating point value then we can just do the same kind of thing but if it's not then we will uh, save the number of equations and a q as the length of u0 and we will make uh, a two-dimensional array which will have the dimensions n plus 1 as before and then the number of equations right we need to do one more thing, and that, that, that is when we um, we take in our function, we need to uh, to cast it as an array. So we'll say that the f equals to lambda, which is a function of u and t, and then simply say that it is as array, and then the f, which is given up here, right? and that this is a function of u and t just to make sure that it works and we also need to okay we'll take because so all our rows up here they are um, the the points right for each equation and the equation number is the column so it's um, so the the entire first row has to be equal to u0 and there I think I have it oh I have one error down here this needs to be minus all right so now let's try it shall we so u and t equal to forward Euler the exact same syntax which is a bit magical so we have a function and we have u zero which we need to we say we need to say what that is and that is one, zero and one, yeah. 
and then we need a, a T and an N and we're going to say that our T is 8 times pi and N uh, to begin with let's say that N is yeah, 200 okay so first let's just check is, if this this runs if it works it does not so we got an error up here oh of course these are in the wrong order there and we also need to um, do all of these don't we yes we do so they also need to take all columns yeah yeah yeah, yeah. because now we have a system of equations yeah I hope this is correct I think it is okay let's try it again oh, well, let's try to plot something actually run okay we have another error yeah because the T is still the same of course so this can be removed so let's try it still have an error a T I guess here again yeah, so now what we're doing now is we have a recursion death problem and that's because the name of this function is the same, so we should probably call this something else. So that's the function supplied by the user. I hope that should, should solve it, yeah. And I forgot to show the graph. Oh, I'm getting nervous even though this isn't live. That's, that's weird. No! Nah. Here we go. So we have two solutions, and that, that's that's correct because um, we plotted both the derivative and the uh, the actual solution. So our u zero is the solution. So let's just plot just that one. This guy again. Uh, all the rows and just the first column. Yeah. There we go. And we see that it starts at zero, which is correct because it's a sine function. But we see that it kind of uh, stretched it out in a while. So we, we, let's compare it to the exact solution. We know that it's supposed to be a sine function and with different amount of time steps, just as um, in the previous video. And we'll see how it goes. All right. So what we'll do is we will iterate over the number of uh, n's instead. So for n in range. Well, let's start at 200 and then also do a 1000 and 500. So they are supposed to be get better and better. And then, oh, we don't need that one here. You can be up here. Hooray. And then we'll plot T and U will make it dashed line style equals dashed and label it as N is equal to N and then we'll also plot T equal to zero up to uh, T which is going to be the exact same thing I think I'm not sure let's see the the forward Euler method isn't that good so uh, okay we'll have T and then also the sine function of the T now this T is the same as the T up here so let's just yeah that should work hopefully let's go Jibaliba, I did an error. We only need to supply the list. There we go. Oh, forgot the legend. So let's include that so we'll see um, 
exactly what what is what. Ah, there we go. So the so what we see is that when we have a lower resolution, fewer fewer time steps, that the um, the function kind of uh, it, it gets more and more skewed, more more wrong as we progress. So we need a lot of time step to actually be close to the uh, the exact value, and even the thousand number uh, with the thousand time steps over this short distance of well 25 something, we we still get an error. So that's that's really cool. So hopefully now you know something about how to implement a system of equations, and you also saw that we could uh, rewrite a higher order uh, differential equation into a system of equations. So we still a we're still able to solve it with our our scheme. Um, we also saw that the forward Euler method, it, um, it, it even with a thousand uh, time spe steps over um, from zero to twenty-five, it's not that good. And there are more precise methods, and eventually we will implement them as well. But in uh, in the next video, what we'll start doing is that we will um, look at some some common features of different numerical schemes for solving differential equations and we'll imp implement a class which we can inherit from so we don't need to rewrite a lot of code. So see you in the next video.